Hello, Hello, I'm Howie Sheriff, and welcome to another show from You Call This Yoga, our internet live TV talk show where we would discuss accessible modes of yoga, which means that we're exploring the eight limbs of yoga, avoiding primary focus on asana and movement, though we weave it in there, but to the other elements of how we can share the art and science of yoga. I come from a space of disability with arthritis and eventually some neuromuscular challenges. And I've learned to adapt yoga towards my body starting in the early phases of my exposure about 20 years ago. It's been fascinating over the years to help others and also be helped by many. So as we bring guests on the show, they are sharing their passion through yoga that is accessible for people that may not readily have access to it. Today we have the joyful pleasure of sharing Sherry Clampett with you, our viewers and listeners. We hope that you'll be planning to check in with us, whether it's by Skype at Computers 2K Voice, telephone 919-518, 9773, or logging into the chat box at the nissancommunications.com where you are now, hopefully listening or viewing this live. During the show, we'll have pearls of wisdom from Sherry and some sponsor spot from You Call This Yoga. Our mission is to help the physically challenged and underserved improve their life with yoga, and you can find us at youcallthisyoga.org. The shows will be archived and you can view them on demand now on the Nissan Communications channel and eventually on the You Call This Yoga website. First, the breaking news. Though we are having a blast performing and sharing this show, it is not sustainable in the current form. Therefore, at the end of the month, meaning after next week with Stephanie Munaz, We'll be stopping this type of broadcasting and exploring other modalities, though you can still view the show archived. So let's enjoy the pleasure of live interaction and then bring Sherry on the show. And we won't say that three times fast. So, <laughs> so that she could share some of her journey as to how she was introduced to the practice of yoga and some of the marvelous ways that she and her team are sharing accessible yoga. Good morning, Sherry from California. Good morning, Howie. It's great to be with you and your listeners today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tell us, uh, I've read and have gotten to appreciate some of your introduction to yoga, but can you share some of your history when as comfortable for you as to where you've approached yoga from? Yes. Uh, well, yoga came to me in a time of healing, and I think that's why I'm so focused on yoga and the healing effects of yoga in my teaching and my work in the world. Um, I Actually, the very first introduction to yoga was through a chiropractor when I had a scoliosis and went to him, and I didn't know it was yoga until much later. He said to me, Sherry, that was yoga that you were doing to correct your scoliosis. So that was actually my very first introduction. Uh, and then years later, some friends took me to a yoga class and I was a little uh, resistant to going. I had all these images of what yoga was in my mind. and uh, But I went and it was at the end of the class in Shavasana that I had a very a great sense of disconnect from my body, that from my waist down there was a disconnect. Um, I had been experiencing some symptoms that were disconcerting, 
And in that moment of stillness, in that moment of quietude and listening, I became aware that something was wrong with my body. And I went to a doctor and was diagnosed with cancer and had surgery. And it started me on a completely different path, work-wise and everything. I became fascinated with how do we heal and what is healing about and, and yoga that it might have saved my life in that moment. Yeah, mm. It's a turning mm. point. And that's interesting that you were able to frame it as a disconnect at a time that you were able to be very still, which for some could be a very awkward interface. Can you share yeah. a little more about the sense of disconnect and stillness at that time? Well, you know, in the moment, I really didn't know what it was. A lot of emotion came up for me. And uh, so I was in Shavasana crying. And I think if you've experienced Shavasana at some point in time, it opens up your heart and your your spirit and your body in ways, just the stillness, the meditation, the feeling into ourselves after doing whatever yoga we've done. I mean, it's such a powerful pose. Uh, and so, yeah, there was just this awareness that uh, it was almost like a numbness in that part of my body. And, uh, and later, it was actually years after my surgery, I had a reoccurrence of the cancer and uh, my doctor was talking about a partial hysterectomy. And that's when I went into what that what was going on there in a deeper way um, and really touched into the trauma that was held there. I had been sick a lot as a child. I had had a lot of really difficult medical procedures for bladder infections and things and bladder surgeries. And there was a lot of trauma. And there was trauma from week week and after week of this uh, kind of treatment that was really painful. Uh, and so my body remembered it all. And as I started to get still, it started to arise. I think the cancer also guided me to that deeper healing. It was an opportunity for me to start to heal some things that I was really just kind of, my body was holding. You know, our issues are in our tissues, and it's so true that our body remembers everything we've been through. And if there's been trauma or abuse or, you know, uh, difficulty, you know, there's the numbing of the nerves to help us with pain, but then there's another numbing that I think we can do, and it can be through addiction, it can be through disconnect. Um, and so that was something that I was experiencing was that numbing. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. I'm, I'm uh, appreciating my own traumas as you're sharing that and uh, listening to you and trying to stay with the show at the same time. <laughs> uh, Wonderful that you're staying aware of your own body and your, I mean, that's part of what we do as yogis. We, we learn to come into our body in a richer way and to meet it and to feel those, those things that even when somebody's speaking that we can get triggered into, uh, touched into those places in us that are wounded. So. Um, that's a beautiful teaching for those that are listening to you may be uh, when you're sitting with somebody that's suffering or when you're uh, talking with somebody you may feel in your own body the wounds that are there and instead of just you know pushing it down you know make time at some point to feel it I had a social worker tell me that who works with cancer patients she says she listens and she holds space in a really pure way but then she's noticing at the same time her body and when she needs to leave that person she goes and she reconnects with the things that she was deeply affected by so she doesn't just negate it or disconnect from it she journals about it or she lights a candle and whatever it is for her that helps her to do this incredible work that she does in the world. And I think there are many of you out there that are doing beautiful work and holding space for others. Don't forget yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yes. Well, and at that uh, juncture, I'll just put out there that uh, this week on Wednesday in Durham and next week in Raleigh, I'll be sharing a yoga for veteran caregivers. So wow. you call this yoga has gotten involved with the VA locally, 
and we're going to the libraries to in share ways of managing some of your own issues in your tissues as well as in your family. Uh, we won't answer it all in one hour at a library, but hopefully to get a conversation going within you and within your family system. So just look at that at the youcallthisyoga.org website under what we do. Back to Sherry and some Beautiful. of- Beautiful, <laughs> I'm so glad you're doing that for veterans, caregivers, it's so important, such important work. Well, well, thank you. It's it's a wonderful opportunity that's growing as part of our mission's focus this year. Uh, and to get invited to do that is very special. Uh, and so that's, uh, as I'm plugging our uh, organization, hopefully the people that are in the Raleigh, Durham, and Triangle area will share this with their loved ones or invite it wherever their veteran centers are also. Uh, so Sherry, uh, you had sp spoken about getting ex uh, exposure to yoga, uh, sort of the awakening of a disorder that's been recurrent, uh, and you had a chiropractor, but along the way, I sense that there's been other teachers, especially in your healing process. Yes. Could you share some of some this path too? Yeah, um, well, you know, many different teachers, wonderful yoga teachers. You know, I studied with Anna Delory, uh, restorative yoga, and, and she was, uh, said studied with Gita in, in, in Mr. Iyengar in India and brought it back and I assisted some of her classes. And, you know, at that time I was living in Los Angeles and the AIDS crisis was happening and I became very uh, interested in, in helping people that were HIV positive or living with AIDS and worked at Marianne Williamson Center offering free classes and you know and what I saw too there I mean talk about teachers is you know when you're ill when you're not able to do the the typical practice of yoga because of what's going on in your body how do we uh, find ways to be with our body and there was such great teaching for me uh, from the people that I worked with. I also took yoga into an AIDS hospice and that's where really the, the different qualities of therapeutic yoga evolved was through working with people and trying things and seeing that you need something different when you're healing. So Louise Hay was an interesting teacher for me and I went to her Hay House meetings and did healing work with people there uh, in West Hollywood in the late 80s. Um, I was trained as an energy worker from Dolores Ringor, and I worked with uh, Rosalind uh, Breyer and lots of incredible energy healers, Barbara Ann Brennan, and, um, and teachers, Ganga White and Tracy Rich at the White Lotus Foundation gave me my foundation in yoga teaching and philosophy and uh, beautiful, beautiful teachers. And I became certified as a yoga therapist and co-led the trainings with Joseph LePage, the integrative yoga therapy trainings, which are fantastic trainings. And it was there that, uh, as because I was on staff, I got to study with incredible people like Richard Miller, who was on your show, uh, Donna Fari, uh, uh, Mukunda Styles, you know, incredible teachers in the field. And and this was you know, 25 years ago, so it's a long time, but uh, those gems of wisdom live in me and live really as I carry the work forward. I, I also feel like uh, I'm guided, you know, I'm guided in a spiritual way with my work and it's so beautiful to just, you know, to open and ask and to listen and to follow what guidance comes from a deeper place too. Mm. Fabulous. Well, that is such a primordial pool of wisdom and experience and emotion because to be working with uh, people's energies where people were dying uh, is not a, an easy path, I can only surmise. It's so tender and it's so beautiful. It's, it's very, it's interesting that you bring that up because Sunday I was, uh, I was with my dear friend as she took her last breath. And it was extraordinarily beautiful. And uh, it's something that happens, you know, when you do this work and um, you work with people that are going through all kinds of things in their bodies. And 
you know, as I was with her, I said, uh, you know, feel feel the love that surrounds you. And uh, I I propped her body with some support under her legs at one point for more comfort. And, you know, just these things that are part of the yoga teaching, but to bring it in those moments of deep surrender as, and I think the practice of, Supports us in preparing for death too, and I know many, many teachers. Uh, we all know that that's going to be, um, you know, that sunset of our life, that moment of letting go. We practice that every time we practice shavasana, which is corpse pose, that deep letting go and surrender. And uh, it can be difficult, you know, when there's emotional challenges and relationship issues and. So that's where I think yoga can also bring awareness and light to what needs healing before we start to leave our body and uh, mm -hmm. you know, to, to really meet what needs healing. True. Well, viewers and listeners, uh, if you're at a place that you can pause and let this next pearl of wisdom become part of your consciousness, uh, unless you're driving or operating vehicles, uh, please consider the opportunity in pearl number one. A dear friend, a medical doctor once said to me, if people would just stop once a day and put their hands on their body and check inside, there'd be more harmony, more balance. People wouldn't be so stressed and out of balance. And that's when I began what I call a me time practice where you stop in the middle of your day, you put your hands on your body, and you check inside. You may ask your body, how are you today? What do you need? How can I support your greatest health and wellness? And then listening. And as you're tuning into your body, discovering what it needs, then you want to just be sure to follow through with that at some point, whether you can do it in that moment, or later in that day or week, but taking time for yourself in a me time practice can be a wonderful thing to do. Uh, I recommend it during the day, but if you can't do it during the day, you can always do it at night before you go to sleep. One hand on the belly, one hand on the heart, some deep breathing and listening. Enjoy your me time. Namaste. Welcome back, viewers and listeners, to our time. That includes your me time whenever you're ready. It was interesting because I utilize other professionals in my wellness team uh, because I've come to find over many years that my sense of myself isn't always accurate, whether that be mentally, physically, emotionally. And just recently, uh, my physician noticed a nodule on my thyroid. So then I had a, uh, and that's not that far to look at, and I've had a lot of neck surgeries. So it's interesting when we talk about areas of trauma, and though I don't know if they're, they're directly related, but it's an area of uh, history, we'll just call it that, and that I'm approaching getting a biopsy and the potential of, Hmm, what does a biopsy mean? And just trying to stay with the now that, well, it just means that I'm getting a biopsy and uh, surrender that it, nothing else exists yet. But many of us have stuff that we've put away and we know it exists, but it's out there somewhere. And taking that me time is almost like that, uh, I guess maybe part of Stranger Things, the uh, upside down, where... Uh, there's this other world that's right next to us. Well, you know, we get so busy and uh, I think the body does need us to check in with it, just like you would a good friend. How are you? But especially when you're going through something challenging, like facing a biopsy in the unknown and all of that, it, it, I think it especially is valuable to stop a few times a day, put your hands on your body, check in, ask it, how can I support you? What do you need? And, um, and then, you know, all of the other things that we do for ourselves, you know, to bring that compassion and that love to ourselves, just as you would a child or a dear friend, 
And to notice if that's difficult for you, if you tend to just kind of push through and stay strong, I think the other thing we need to do is feel our emotions. You know, our emotions are great, uh, they're great gifts and we feel them for a reason. And so, you know, when we feel scared or we feel joyous or we feel um, grief, you know, to let that energy move and emotion is energy in motion. And there's a tendency to get strong, to get carried through something, but to also feel all the feelings I think can help keep the energy fluid in the body, uh, keep us from tightening and holding things in such a difficult way in our body. And um, so, yeah, you know, and, uh, and Howie, I, I hope that I'll get to see you. I leave tomorrow for rally and I'd love to see you and do a session with you while I'm in, um, in your neck of the woods and, and support you right now. That's a funny in the neck of the woods. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> Viewers and listeners, Sherry may have a very subtle way, but deep inside, she's got shtick. In fact, she's put together a special stick outfit here. It's called her therapeutic yoga kit. It's really her shtick on relaxation and getting in touch with your body. Amnon, could you show that again one more time? Yes. And why is Sherry come to Raleigh? Because A, to help me, but also B, to help many teachers and participants in our area with her therapeutic yoga training. Uh, I just happened to have my wife Barbara's kit because she's taken the training at Blue Lotus. And Sherry, would you give a, a little shtick about your kit and how you came to create this therapeutic yoga protocol? Yes, absolutely. Well, a dear friend of mine, Biff Mithofer, uh, did the yin yoga kit and uh, we were having tea and I said, oh, you know, I'm teaching these therapeutic yoga trainings. It would be so wonderful to do a kit for therapeutic yoga, uh, in part because of the deck of cards. So it comes with this deck of flashcards that are fabulous for practitioners and for teachers. <clears throat> so in the training, pardon me, <clears throat> we teach 16 restorative poses. My co-teacher and I, Arturo Peel, uh, and yeah, thanks. Uh, so the, the nice thing about the card is it has a photo of the posture. It has the contraindications and benefits, has the meridian lines that are affected, the name. Uh, so when you're teaching, you can <clears throat> put it down and... <laughs> Uh, easily refer to it if you need to. And if you're practicing at home, you can also kind of choose which poses you want to do that day, put them down and gather your props and do your practice. And the therapeutic yoga is really a blend of the restorative yoga postures where the body's supported by blankets and the wall and bolsters and, and pillows and uh, gentle yoga, gentle yoga movements to stretch and warm and lubricate the joints, uh, breath work or breath awareness, guided meditation, and hands-on healing. And sometimes that's yourself. There's actually a whole chapter on self-healing, both through using the, the postures to massage your own body, but also ways to, through touch, through self-touch and self-healing. But as yoga teachers and therapeutic yoga, we also bring that into the sessions. And it's a really beautiful practice. And I actually don't know how I would be alive if I didn't have it, you know. Um, you know, just taking care of my mother who passed with Alzheimer's a few years ago was so mentally, emotionally, physically draining. Uh, it was something I came back to time and again. I'd come home and put myself in a pose and feel my feelings and breathe. And and it really is an incredible gift yoga gives us, all yoga. But I think when you're going through a lot, the restorative postures especially are incredible. Yeah. Well. <laughs> oh, I also want to tell you in the kit... Yes. Uh, there's a CD that guides you through a practice. Yes. And at the last track of the CD is a, um, is a guided meditation called Your Body uh, as a Healing Garden. And it's uh, transforming what's happening in your body uh, as if it were flowers in a garden or growth that's beautiful and transforming. And 
Uh, and Biff in the poses recites poetry, beautiful poetry. So it's a beautiful collaboration between us and I hope that you'll uh, treat yourself. You can get it on Amazon. That's probably the easiest way to pick it up. If you're not coming to the training. <laughs> if you're not coming to the training, yeah. Uh, and, and viewers and listeners will also share a little bit more about Sherry's journey as she's heading east because she is coming to Raleigh and I do intend to meet her. And I hope that we can also record some of Sherry's sessions uh, at the You Call This Yoga home studio to be determined in the future, hopefully next week. Uh, but Sherry is also going to New York from here for her level one and level two trainings. And my understanding is level one involves a lot of this restorative kit. Could you clarify some of that? Yes, yes. The level one training, um, which Arturo Peel and I developed and started almost 20 years ago, next year it'll be 20 years we started the teaching the training at Integral Yoga in New York City. Uh, it is uh, really was uh, 16 poses and a lot of the gentle yoga and things that you'll see in the kit. Uh, we basically took the manual and uh, brought it into kit form for practitioner but also for yoga teacher. Uh, and uh, so the manual has more in-depth teaching for teachers. Uh, certainly we, the training, each of our trainings comes with an extensive manual with photographs and you know we go into uh, quite depth about uh, conditions and various things that you'll see as a yoga teacher working therapeutically uh, and you know how to how to um, support people where they are so the yoga meets them rather than them trying to fit into the yoga, which is what makes yoga accessible. Mm -hmm. And it's so beautiful. I mean, I used to have, when I taught my yoga for healing classes here in Santa Barbara, I had people in wheelchairs come to class and people with uh, amputees and coming straight out of surgery. They knew it was a safe class that they could come no matter what was going on with their body or their emotional state. Uh, and so I always felt very drawn to make yoga accessible to all. And so that's one of the things we really teach in therapeutic yoga is, you know, how to meet that pregnant person or that aging person, the person with arthritis or a chronic illness or somebody who comes in who's in physical pain. You know, it, their practice may look quite different, but there's always a way to work with them. Mm. Thank you. Viewers and listeners, therapeuticyoga.com is Sherry's website. I was there this morning uh, and it had also a wonderful offer about her yoga programs online and a free one month offer. So if you're curious and or experienced already and want to go a little deeper, Sherry, could you share about your one month offering on Sure, sure. Um, yes, I'm one of the featured teachers on Yoga Anytime. It's an incredible online yoga offering to the world. Um, I have students in Slovenia that practice with me there. Um, and it, we record almost like television shows. So each season has a different theme. So I filmed seasons for breast cancer, immune health, uh, for trauma, anxiety, stress reduction, for adrenal fatigue, for menopause, for all kinds of things. So there's uh, about three seasons that I filled and filmed, and there's around six or seven videos in each season. So it with this code, it's my last name in capital letters, but you can go to Therapeutic Yoga and click on the link, and it'll take you right there, and the code is in, already in the, the um, link you get 30 days free so you can try it out and the nice thing about it that i really love too and i travel and i use it a lot and i study with many different teachers there i'm just one of the many in fact arturo peel my teaching partner is featured as well um, it has gentle yoga meditation yin yoga it has strong flow ashtanga it has something for everyone and uh and so yeah it's 18 dollars a month after if if after the 30-day trial if you want to try it monthly so it's very reasonable there's chair yoga there's yoga for elderly i mean it's just an incredible offering i hope you'll join me there viewers and listeners this is a wonderful offer instead of binge watching 
some violent show, you can change the immune system channel and calm it down with the nervous system and let your body start to heal instead of feeling in a state of agitation perpetually, not knowing what to do next. Uh, I can encourage you because I also practice my restorative yoga at night and I'm watching Sports Center, I'll have to admit, but there's, it, I'm not putting my body in harm's way anymore. My legs are up in ottoman and I'm integrating some of my Vinny yoga in there as well as general <laughs> stretches uh, that I've learned in my restorative training. And it's really, it's, it's about laying around and letting yourself transition into a deeper state. Uh, and as I shared last week, I got surprised watching this 9-11 special that I hope you'll check back and see that about heroism and selflessness and just how you're going to spend the last hour of your life. Uh, but in the meantime, you can spend the next hour of your life figuring out how to get a little more in touch with yourself. We'll also do that in the sense of a deeper scale called rhythm. Rhythm is something that we go through, whether it's consciously aware or not. And we invited Sherry to share a pearl about rhythm. I like to think about rhythm and rhythm in, that exists in life. Certainly the rhythm of our bodies, uh, our heartbeat, our lungs. There's a saying in yoga that as you slow your breathing down, you live a longer life, that we're born with a certain amount of breaths. Well, that's interesting when you think of the rhythm of the breath that happens when we're stressed, where we breathe very short and shallow and quick. And when we're relaxed, we, the rhythm of our breath is deep and slow and even and smooth. So in thinking about the rhythms of life and in your own life, how is your rhythm? Are you pushing, striving? Are you resting enough? Are you finding balance and harmony in the rhythms of your life. My experience generally is that we tend to achieve and strive more than we rest and reflect. So if that's the case for you, uh, you might want to find a way to bring more stillness into your life and even just incorporating a meditation practice, a time where you set a clock and you close your eyes and you still your mind and you go inside for a time can be a great way to do that. Namaste. While Sherry was sharing that, I was picturing where in my day I add a little bit of rhythm called non-striving. Mm -hmm. Though I'm striving at something I tend to strive at gardening on occasion, just to get off my seat, move around, get outside. And it might be for a minute or two, but it, I have the luxury of operating from my home now that I'm uh, a retiree, per se. Uh, but Sherry, how do you like to integrate some differences in your rhythm throughout the day so that it creates balance? Well, I like to actually start the day with meditation. So my husband and I get up a little earlier to make time for that. And we focus on what we're grateful for, what we're opening to, you know, make manifest in our lives. And, um, you know, to just sit quietly too. to sit quietly. We light candles and create a lovely space for that. And that really sets me up for my day. And then I'm, I'm quite busy. I have a lot going on. Like right now, I'm, I've got to four trainings uh, before the end of the year. And so I'm, I'm doing a lot to prepare for that. And <clears throat> so I find that it's helpful. You know, I'll, I'll do a, a walk or a hike or something in the morning. I walk with friends three times a week or hike. And then I also, um, so that's a little more active, right? That's more young. And then usually after I've given all my sessions for the day, I come in, come home, and before dinner, I do a restorative pose or two, or I'm, if I have time, I'll do a longer practice. And sometimes my husband comes home from work, and we right away 
go into our space that's always set up with bolsters that we can just go right in and start practicing. But also the me time, you know, putting one hand on the heart, one hand on the belly, and I have it on my phone. So the reminder goes off, it's me time. And sometimes I'm not able to do it right then, but I'll try to do it soon after when the space opens. It takes a few moments to just close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and connect. And that slows me down a little bit if I get going fast. And and I can get going really fast. And, you know, I enjoy that too. But I try to think about my rhythm where how has my day gone? Have I taken time to rest? And two, there are times where I realize with my me time, I need to lay down for a few minutes. I'm really tired or I didn't sleep well. or And so I'll give that to myself and then go do my next session. So it doesn't always have to be a full practice. It can be 10 minutes in Shavasana with some breathing. And I come back to my day with new energy. Mm -hmm. I have on my phone the timer set with chimes. And it's usually set on 18 minutes because I invariably go into a nap within the first minute. And I just try to stay out of REM. So my understanding is short of 20 minutes is uh, keeping you out of REM and sleep disruption. Yes. So viewers and listeners, anywhere from uh, one minute to 18 minutes of me time could be quite therapeutic at intervals throughout the day. And if you think about it, there's a lot of cultures, you know, Spain and China, and that they, ha you know, they have a, a nap time. Even France, you know, they close everything at lunch a few hours, even the banks, you know, so that people can have a long, relaxed meal, not rush their eating and, you know, rest. And I think we've lost that sacred rhythm of rest. I think it's really important to get enough rest. You know, we've found recently in, in studies, one of the things that happens when we sleep is our brain is cleansing itself. It's incredible. You know, you wonder, why do I need to lay down for that many hours at night? Well, there's important things happening. And so, too, if you're not sleeping well at night, you know, making sure that you're putting on beautiful music, you're turning off the computer, you're starting to wind down as the sun starts to go down, to begin to move towards rest. And that's one thing I think my husband's music is great for. We actually put it on in the house and we start to uh, just get in a re more relaxed place. Sometimes I'll light candles because the light is softer and then it's easier to drift off to sleep. Uh, but if you have trouble sleeping, you can certainly do deep breathing. Um, I find jaw release is also really helpful when you're uh, trying to sleep. It's a very good place to massage or to release to help you go into your sleep. Mm. Well, since we're heading towards something that we might call a sacred space in terms of the land of unconscious and healing, it may be reasonable to transition to our next pearl. <laughs> Amnon, cue up the next oyster. Sacred space can be created easily. With a little bit of beautiful music, a flower, something that makes you feel good, a pillow that you love, or a throw blanket that feels soft. These are things I like to bring into my yoga practice and share when I'm teaching because I find it creates an environment that enhances the experience. Right now I'm playing the music of Avahara. Avahara is my husband and he's an ambient musician who is passionate about yoga and meditation. And his music, I find, it's not disruptive. It's very quiet and very peaceful, and it actually encourages the deep inward exploration of more meditative practices. So if that's something that calls to you, I encourage you to enhance your experience by creating sacred space. And I think safe space is important too. When we're moving into those deep places within, we feel safe, we're practicing in a space where we can close the door, we can open deeply, uh, it allows that blossoming. And so thinking about for you, what will help you to create that wonderful kind of environment for yourself? Namaste. Hmm. 
Well, I hope that softened the atmosphere in your worlds, viewers and listeners. We'd love to sense what you're experiencing and any questions or comments. You can call in at 919-518-9773, Skype, Computers 2K Voice, the chat box on your computer where you log in. I had the pleasure of having Avahara's CD at home, and therefore I was able to play it in class yesterday because I'm an old-timey player, and I play it on a CD player at our adaptive yoga class where we were playing with bolsters and whether it be legs up and over in a uh, sort of a saddle brook sort of mode to a back bend over the back of the bolsters to a side bend and then back to legs over the bolster. We were just spinning around. It was almost like break dancing. Oh yeah, there was a little... <laughs> There was a little side twisted sphinx in there that I call Oiga Vault, but that's another <laughs> show that uh, you have to f see it and experience. And then once you get into it, it's blissful because it's a very supported pose. But I uh, getting there is a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but we did have Avahara on yesterday, and it is very soothing for myself, the teacher, too. And I wonder also is the teachers who might be listening or listening later uh, may have experiences also where they're trying to work their brain and manage the room and negotiate variables that come up in the process. And there's also a process of, for teachers here. And uh, what are we experiencing as we're going? Any thoughts for the teachers? Well, I think that one of the things I teach in my trainings is that you, before you teach, you take a few moments to ground and center yourself and open at the same time to the inspiration. Um, so it's a meditation that I teach <clears throat> that I find is really helpful before you step into a class. Um, I think that's great. I think self-care for teachers is really important when you are giving so much of yourself to make sure that you fill the well. Um, but I think things like music, aromatherapy, changing the lighting, you know, making sure the props are clean and well cared for, uh, lighting a candle in the space, all those things as we were talking about sacred space can really create a, an environment that's conducive to this deep inner work. You know, I think it, it takes a lot of courage to practice yoga because every time you come to your mat, whether it's, you know, in a wheelchair, uh, whether it's in a restorative pose or a flow practice, you're meeting yourself. And it takes courage to feel and to meet what's there. I mean, if you've lived long enough, you've gone through a lot, right, in your body and in your heart. And um, yoga is a beautiful practice to to invite us time and again to, to feel and to go into these bodies, which are wise and universes within themselves. And that's one of the things I also really love as a teacher is I feel I can create an environment that creates safety where people can go in and meet that which needs healing and and that the wisdom to heal is within us. I really believe the body knows how to heal. <clears throat> it just needs us to be able to get quiet, to listen, and to follow that great wisdom. You've also thank you, Sherry. You've you've mentioned about cancer, whether it be your journey, but also the institutes and the hospitals that you've worked with, and many a patient. How has cancer therapies changed, and how has yoga therapies changed with changing of cancer therapies? Well, it's you know it's so exciting to see what's happening right now, um, and. You know, it was 17 years ago that I started a program at the local cancer center here in the boardroom with, you know, a, a grant to pay for it and my yoga props. And uh, and this many years later, they've created a 
yoga space. I mean, it was only a few years really after uh, that class started. They created a yoga space for us. The doctors saw such a difference in the patients that were doing yoga. They said, how can we have more classes? It went from one class a week to seven classes a week, including one for the doctors and nurses, because they said, we need it too, you know? And so I've gone from teaching in wellness centers and hospitals in LA through the AIDS crisis, where uh, a lot of times I talked about stress reduction because that was something they could hear, not necessarily yoga. I wouldn't even use the word yoga, but I was teaching yoga to now uh, being able to talk about yoga to Ohm in a class, in a lot of classes, we can bring in some of the subtler, you know, beautiful um, ways of yoga. And now the hospitals are creating integrative programs. They're looking for yoga teachers. They're looking for people that can bring this in. And it's one of the great uh, gifts of teaching the therapeutic yoga training is I have teachers that are teaching uh bedside in hospitals working with palliative care patients. I have people working with spinal cord injury patients that are newly paralyzed, uh, graduates from the training working with elderly and children. And, um, you know, just I could go on and on. And I'm so proud of the work that's being done in the world that people are saying, yes, yoga is accessible to all and let's take it to those that need it. And that was the intention of my training. When I first started the training, uh, Janet Stein, who was a student of mine, said, said, what's your vision? And I said, to take yoga to those in need. And I, having gone through cancer, I knew that was a place, seeing the AIDS crisis, I knew that was a very much a needed uh, gift to people that were going through that journey. And so it's been, um, it's been beautiful to watch that whatever we go through in our lives and our bodies, yoga can be there for us. And mm. uh, yeah, and it's, it's, an been, honor it's been fascinating too in some of the growth of our programs with you call this yoga. Uh, we have a program for blind, really ability, blind rehabilitation for veterans too. Uh, and I've been able to start that class with another teacher, hopefully in the wings, where twice a month, uh, someone is being brought by a family member, some family members are participating even, and that next week there's an Olympiad for disabled veterans in San Diego. And we're able to do chair-based yoga for a gal who uses a walker who's going to be part of a, a team, a dyad, doing such things as kayaking and archery and rowing. And uh, so it's, it's pretty incredible to uh, build yoga into the cross training and to facilitate her breathing and movement and connection. Uh, so yoga, in, in my mind, uh, also fosters community for the people that might be feeling a little disenfranchised because it, it facilitates participation. Uh, and the people that are, quote, well-bodied may not readily be fully engaged in their bodies and have a lot to learn from those, including us, that have had some compromise in our lives. And of course, we all have compromises in our life, whether we live in denial or not. So it's... <laughs> True. <laughs> I'm just coming out of denial more. Maybe I'm still skirting the border. Uh, mm -hmm. But my uh, exposures with other people and as a teacher and, and as engaging community, uh, we're seeing how uh, even youth, and we're starting a new program with the Boys and Girls Club next month, uh, are eager to learn stress management skills. Uh, the staff of these organizations uh, look for that because there's somebody that's been tried already and distraction isn't the answer for uh, self-management. It's wonderful to see boys and girls learning these practices. I wish I had learned as a child, you know, I went through so much trauma and it would have helped me so much, you know, later it did when I found yoga, it totally changed my life. But to have had it as a child would have been wonderful, even just to learn to breathe through a difficult procedure or, you know, uh, to, to work with the, you know, 
challenges. It's it's a gift, and uh, I'm so glad to hear that's happening. Mm -hmm. Well, and in in the cancer hospital, uh, what's the age demographics that you've seen over the years? Have you had programs that have helped children? Yes, yes. Um, both Avahara and I uh, were invited regularly to the Cancer Society camp for kids with cancer and uh, teaching therapeutic yoga there, and he plays live music. And that is uh, just an incredible, uh, we just love doing it. Uh, it's been so sweet. It usually happens here in Santa Barbara, at the El Capitan uh, campground, and they bring in all kinds of wonderful uh, different people to support them. And um, But I do see that kids love that. They love to learn how to palm and you know, they're so creative with guided meditation. You can say, oh, you know, let's let's dance over the rainbow and jump on the back of a unicorn and, you know, and use the imagination to support their healing and relaxation. And it's uh, it's been a joy when I've worked with kids. And I've also worked with some traumatized kids and, you know, bringing them into restorative poses where they feel like they're in a hiding place and, you know, inviting them to find that safety in their mind after they've been through so much trauma. So it's uh, it's beautiful. There are many different uh, things that we can bring to kids from the teachings of yoga. Mm. I'd like to get back to your uh, Yoga Anytime show and to reiterate this wonderful offering about mm -hmm. Yoga Anytime. Uh, when you're making these shows and you have this theme, do you also have uh, people with these conditions participating? Yes, yes. My very first season of Yoga for Any Time, I brought two women um, to be my models. And one had just been diagnosed with breast cancer and one was almost done with her treatment. Um, she was finishing chemotherapy and they're both doing very well. Uh, and they, one of them, well, actually both of them, no, one of them I met at the cancer center classes and one at one of my workshops and, <clears throat> excuse me, they both, uh, found yoga to be incredibly helpful on their journey. And so it was wonderful to bring them in as models. We even had a conversation. So we sat and had a conversation about cancer and then there were several practices offered. Um, practices for breast cancer and immune health and and even a practice for caregivers in that first season because caregivers give so much and often get very depleted and I, I just think that the caregiver needs support as well so we did a practice for caregivers uh, and uh, so that's the season one and but anybody can practice those practices uh, mm -hmm. because they're so good for immune health and the deep relaxation for de-stressing and the way that it opens the body and the energy body. Uh, I had a, a acupuncturist friend here. He started the acupuncture college here in Santa Barbara tell me one time that opening the conception vessel is really important for people with cancer. It's one of the extraordinary meridian lines that takes energy to where it's needed in the body. So uh, I feel very passionate about the gentle back beds and things that open that flow of energy through the, the REN channel or conception vessel and meridian line. Um, so a lot of what we're doing also is freeing up energy so the body can focus on healing itself. When we're in a stress response, when there's that question, am I safe and we don't feel safe, there is a stress response in the body and then that's when the body has to focus on dealing with the stress and, and it doesn't really uh, get a chance to mend and heal itself, which it's trying to do. So especially when you're in a healing process, to bring yourself into that stress-free place as often as possible will help to speed up the healing process. And I've seen it, I've seen the miraculous healings from things that were thought to not be healable. Uh, you know, that's not a word, but you know what I'm saying. You know, and healing is different than curing. We can also heal through the death process. We can heal even if we don't have an absolute uh, clear margin, you know, with our cancer. So um, I just think it's important to to uh, to know that uh, we can we can always heal no matter where we are in our journey. Mm. 
viewers and listeners, we're talking about Sherry Clampett's series on Yoga Anytime, which you can find via her therapeuticyoga.com website under videos and tutorials or study. It's on the right side of the, uh, the menu bar, I know that. There were some great options there. Also, she has tutorials and trainings with students around the world. So if you're in other countries, you might reach out and find that there is therapeutic yoga closer than you may have imagined. Uh, I think it's thrilling that these uh, programs are available for one month that are free. You can binge watch. <laughs> <laughs> I highly recommend it. I, I practice with it too, and I, I love the different teachers, and it would be great to have you join, join us, yeah. Uh, Sherry's going to be in Raleigh this coming weekend at Blue Lotus, one of our dear partners over the many years. Uh, we have friends in the community. There are going to be students on there, including Barbara, who will be uh, part of the teaching program. Uh, so I do encourage you to check out Blue Lotus Yoga and see. Also, uh, she'll be in New York with the Integral Yoga Center doing her therapeutic trainings one and two in the subsequent weeks. Uh, we're thrilled that Sherry is here. Uh, getting back to YouCallThisYoga.org, your host, we are uh, shutting down the show after next week's show. Uh, the reason being is that we've had great viewership, especially in September. Wow, it's, it's going off our chart if we had a chart. Uh, but we have o over 3,000 viewers the last two weeks. Sherry, this is incredible. However, uh, we can't measure who you are. We'd love for you to engage us through YouCallThisYoga.org website but also to give us feedback about the show as we would love to continue in some other form that we might find sustainable, possibly a podcast. So your feedback is very important, viewers and listeners. Uh, we know that there's thousands of you out there sharing it. You can check out our Facebook page for You Call This Yoga. Also our YouTube channel called You Call This Yoga where we do have our Wayne's World of Yoga show, our cable access show that Hopefully, Sherry will be a guest on for next year's viewers, where we have 30-minute chair-based and gentle mat yoga that is accessible for all. It's a little different in that uh, I'm sharing some of the physical aspects of developing a chair-based practice that you can integrate some of the wonderful concepts that Sherry, Avahara, and Arturo have integrated into their training. Sherry, more thoughts, please. Little gems that we could share before we exit. Ah, oh, well, you know, I think that um, <laughs> that old Nike saying, nothing to it but to do it, you know, just do it. Uh, so many of us, we think about yoga, we say, oh, well, I want to do that next week. Just make time to do a little bit every day, even, you know, uh, sit quietly. Uh, you know, go out in nature and breathe. I mean, these are, this is yoga, you know, but, it, but I feel that we're living in a really stressful, difficult time in the world. And I think it's especially important to watch your stress levels. I often see people get sick after they've been under a great deal of stress. So to carve out that period of time for you uh, to get to a class locally that works for you and you can call a studio and say you know i new to yoga or i have a dis disability or an injury what's a good class for me and they'll guide you to a good class and then you go in and you say to the teacher this is what's going on with my body before the class starts so they know if you modify your practice or you do something a little different that you're taking care of yourself and teacher will often come and check in with you hopefully and make sure that everything is is okay and that you know you're taking care of yourself because sometimes the teacher sees that you're doing something different and they want to make sure you've heard what they're teaching but regardless you know to to take care of yourself to nurture yourself to um to just to live your yoga off the mat as well to take mm -hmm. those deep breaths to feel into your body to express yourself authentically and to you know to feel your emotions and then i think things like drinking plenty of water and eating good food is also 
really, really important for health. Beautiful. And those three pearls, me time, um, rhythm. check your rhythm, check and your rhythm. find some sacred space. Viewers and listeners, save the date, April 7, 2018, for Yoga Fest NC. It'll be our seventh. We look forward to you sharing some of the our sacred space with community in Raleigh. Please check out Sherry at therapeutic.com therapeuticyoga.com. Thank you, Sherry, for waking up early, looking as lovely as usual, a teen prodigy in yoga. <laughs> Thank you, Howie. It's been an honor to be with you and to, to share. And I, I trust that this work of yours will continue in other great ways, but it's been such an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. It's always a joy. I'll see you next week. Bye, viewers and listeners. Tune in next week with Stephanie Munoz, Yoga for Arthritis, and all that may come your way eventually. Bye. <laughs>